Hi, I'm Joe. And I'm Digna. Welcome to Relationships. We're a couple having a few. What's up, friends? <laughs> Today, we will be enjoying a most delicious Amagang beer, also known as Winter Has Come. It winter is, is here. <laughs> this one's winter is here. Dang it. <laughs> it's winter has come. Winter is here. It's here. Winter was going of the place where it doth hath been. Winter further hath fortuith. Bend. Yeah. So. The king of the north. <laughs> so Joe got me this really fun. Um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it? Yeah. A gift set for Christmas, actually. And now we're in almost June. But it was a three piece. Um, beer gift set from Amagang. Three-piece bikini. Yep. <laughs> if you've never heard of Amagang, you should definitely check out their beers. They're quite tasty. But Amagang is oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of beer is this? I can't quite see the so bottom. This one called Winter is Here and it's really cool. So we do I, let's go back. They they make great beers. They're from Cooperstown, New York. And uh, they do make really good beers. Uh, what they're really known for is they uh, well not the only thing but one of the things they're known for is they have a series or had a series of Game of Thrones inspired beers mm-hmm. which they would sell in the big bomber and have like a cool label so this bottle is actually called Winter is here not it, winter has come uh, yes not <laughs> winter has come and it has the night king who is the king of the white walkers mm-hmm. yeah it's a really cool looking bottle we'll take a picture um, but yeah, these guys, they make a whole bunch of different beers, a lot of really good beers too. So I don't even know what this one's sitting at as far as alcohol. Um, 8.3%. It's 8.3%, but also more importantly, I was trying to find out what kind of beer it is. It is a double white ale with sea salt and white pepper. So you want a little fresh ground it's a pepper potato in your chip. beer? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and have a little sip of this. I will have a sip out of my fancy, fancy Game of Thrones glass that came with the gift set. Yeah, the gift set comes with an uh, Amagang, and uh, it says Amagang on one side, and it says Game of Thrones on the other side. Oh, my goodness. That's nice. That is good. Tastes sea salty and peppery. Mmm, weird. Mmm, childish and pedantic. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, we are. Yeah, so it's kind of a an unfiltered looking beer, um, very light flavor, quite bubbly. Yes, so it does have that uh, with the higher the higher alcohol, where they have to add a little bit of sweetness to get that alcohol up. So it does have a little bit of sweetness. It reminds me of another beer I had recently. I can't I can't think of the one the name of it, but it it was well, one. You that have has, a lot to choose from. What was the one that it said it had coriander in it? Was the big mm, thing I remember. Coriander. So. Exactly, and that's why I remember that particular beer. It's very good, though. Again, they make good stuff, so. So we have been doing at least one episode per week, but our last episode that we released was actually kind of a twofer with the recording. So we recorded one, and then like two days later, it was Mother's Day, so we said, you know what, let's go ahead and quickly record a Mother's Day episode. Which you should listen to. Obviously, you should listen to it, and all of them. I mean, now that there's... Uh, So many to go for. I think we're up to 14, 15, somewhere around there. This one should be 14, yeah. Yeah, so we're we're getting up there. But So what we did is we had our episode already. It was kind of good to go. And we decided let's go ahead and do a Mother's Day one. So we bumped the RV episode. It was actually recorded before the Mother's Day episode. RV there yet? RV there yet. So we decided to go ahead and do that. And... As a result, we didn't actually record at all last week. So it feels like forever since I've been on the microphone. And we really haven't been able to record because we started school again. So there's that. But before that, let's go back to the RV conversation and the fact that we thought, hey, this week long, the RV was amazing. We want to maybe upgrade our our RV to something new and shiny. And then we went to the dealership. So let's just say we uh, owe more than it's worth. And 
Mm. And they're also very expensive. Yes. <laughs> Those two things combined, not bueno. So, yeah, we'll have to uh, put off any plans of doing the old trader um, but And just, just for your own uh, edification, mom was watching Good Morning America today, and she found out that the whole RV business, because of this COVID shenanigans, has exploded exponentially something like a thousand times the normal amount of people who you know would would be vacationing in an rv i have no idea what those numbers would actually look like that sounds like a an over exaggeration however that just means that rvs are more popular than ever and where we thought hey maybe we'll get a good deal because of the economy and such we all found ourselves in the opposite situation. Yeah, it's the opposite. They're like, hey, hey, we're able to sell these things at top dollar because everybody wants one right now. So go figure. So maybe I should buy like Winnebago stock. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's something to look mm-hmm. into. Mm-hmm. Get on yeah. that Robin Hood. Yeah. So we did enjoy our time out in the old RV. Uh, had a really good time down at the beach. We built some forts. I, this is something I've never done before that we did this time. And I remembered to do it. Uh, even growing up. So we grew up, you know, around here. So we've been on the beach, uh, you know, quite a bit. I never brought a full size shovel to the beach. So as a kid, we always had like the itty bitty little crappy plastic plastic ones that snap every summer. So so you have those or you dig with your hands. But I was like, you know what? I'm a grown man. I'm gonna bring a grown man shovel (laughs) to the beach. Yeah, not even because we had a real metal shovel, but it was Desmond size. Or we, it is Desmond size, and we brought that one, but this one he actually brought like a full size. Not even, I wouldn't even call it a garden shovel, just no, like no, a just full a on like construction shovel. Yeah, so I actually brought the shovel, and within just a few short minutes, I actually had like this giant. I call it the jacuzzi, where you where you kind of dig down to where you're hitting the water level, and so you're you can be far enough away from the water that the actual like beach won't intrude but you can kind of stay cool it's like your own personal little beach pool yeah exactly so it's a little pool at the beach like i said i call it my little jacuzzi but yeah i was able to like dig one of those out in just a couple of minutes where that was probably a majority of an hour if you start digging by hand and then we buried you in it and then we buried me in it that was good up to my, up to my like neck area, not like face. We they weren't. Yeah, he and he wasn't standing in it. He was sitting in it, so it wasn't you know six feet deep. But but there was a lot of me, or there is a lot of me. So to get me in a hole like that is pretty impressive. <laughs> and now we're getting to weird wording. Anyway, um, so, a lot of me, <laughs> a lot of you into a hole. But yeah, so we, <laughs> we had a really good time at the beach. Um, I don't remember. I want to say the day that we recorded, it was a super windy day. Yes. So we had already had our wacko love bug day, which was just awful. It was a gazillion love bugs just attacking every part of your body and just everything in sight. And then there was the super windy day where it was pretty chilly and we stayed inside most of the day and we played some games and I think we watched some TV and it was actually, I mean, it was not an ideal beach day whatsoever, but it was actually a very nice rv vacation day like we got to vacation in the rv which we're normally just yeah, we're I, sleeping in the rv and then outside the whole day yeah i would say as far as us with the rv in general um, we've spent very little time in the rv other than than sleeping so yeah so the whole concept of like oh my gosh the rv it's so small wouldn't you get like cooped up and all that i mean yeah i guess if you were rving somewhere that's perpetually cold then yes you would probably get cooped up yeah like if you had to live in it in like colorado for a few months in yeah because you couldn't drive because it was bad you know whatever so yeah if you were long time living and you couldn't go outside then yeah i guess it could get a little or even really in in florida beachside i probably wouldn't like be sitting outside all day during the winter it's not like snowing but it's also not beautiful out i'm just kidding it's beautiful i would say the worst day here as far as natural weather, not 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 uh, extenuating circumstances like hurricanes, but the worst day of the year here is pretty pretty reasonable. So yeah, we came home. We we had a really good time, and of course, once you come home, then you've got to unpack the RV and uh, you know put all your stuff away and all that. So we've done that. 
Um, we did the Mother's Day thing, which we did an episode for that. And then, like like she mentioned, then we did the... It wasn't really an RV shopping. It's just we went to the dealership um, just to see kind of what was going on. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad we did because it helped us kind of prepare and say, okay, well, we owe more than it's worth. It helped us set realistic expectations. Exactly. So it just, it just kind of gives you a starting point to say, you know what? Maybe this one's not as shabby as I thought it was. <laughs> you want how many tens of thousands of dollars? Exactly. So yeah, those kind of things. You decide. You know what? Let's maybe refocus and and go at it uh, again. Um, so we did that, and now we are looking at the end of May. Uh, we're pretty close to the end of May, and. Today was our son's last day of kindergarten. Last day of kindergarten. Here. <laughs> they grow up so fast. So yeah. the good thing, like we've probably mentioned it before, is he is homeschooled, even though everyone's kind of homeschooled now. But he was actually, we decided, hey, it's kindergarten. Our schedule kind of permits. Let's go ahead and not worry about sending him to public school. And like we try to charter school, I think. Uh, yeah, we well, looked into like a science-based yeah. charter school. Yeah, we looked into it, and when he didn't get in, because it's like a lottery type thing, he didn't get in. We're like, all right, well, let's go ahead and just do homeschool. So we did. We can teach kindergarten. Yeah, I can. Uh, I still remember a lot of that stuff. Um, he, I really had to uh, kind of. It's not that I had to that I've forgotten. It's more I've forgotten what a kindergartner is supposed to know. So as far as like some of the math that I would like try to throw in there, Digna would be like, hey, maybe that's not. (laughs) Maybe he doesn't need to do second grade uh, mathematics. (laughs) So I think he's going to be really good when it comes to like first grade math because he's already got a lot and and his reading's real good. And overall, he I mean, he's just he's a great little guy. So, yeah, I would say that. I mean, we had our rough days like everybody does school wise, but our rough days of school were, you know, I, I would say com- compared to everything, pretty low key. And um, really, if you think about it, we would have had rough days of homework after he came home from school anyway. So we were going to have rough days no matter what. So <laughs> either way. Well, that was the thing. Uh, I remember you, you were saying uh, a friend of yours uh, was talking that her her son had like from kindergarten when he was in kindergarten had like hours of homework per week like when you're thinking like this child's five Mm -hmm. and i was just like well that yeah so they're in school all day and then they've got homework in the evening and that doesn't make any sense whatsoever you know it's something that a lot of people end up doing you know for different choices and stuff and that's all well and good but we were like you know if we don't have to do this we're not gonna we thought hey if we don't want to if we want to have a little bit less stress Let's make it a little less stressful. And then we signed up for school ourselves and we negated all of that lack of stress. Yeah. So the school we're going to, it's not like a, your regular, like a state school where you're like, hey, you know, it's spring break. Let's go party kind of stuff. Plus we're, you know, not 21. And uh, I mean, we're well beyond 21, I should say. Ooh. And I especially dig not. <clears throat> How dare you? Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, spring break at this school for some reason is not until um, it was it was Mother. It was the first week of uh, May. It was Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. It, it bumped into Mother's Day, so that's how kind of late it was. But that's when our semester ended. So that's when we did the trip to the beach and did all of that stuff. So this week, or no, I guess last week mm-hmm. was our first week yeah, back. Yeah, last Wednesday. Was it the day after Mother's Day or the the week after Mother's Day? Right. It was the week after. So we had we had. Mother's Day was Sunday, and then we had that whole week off. So we re- we had like a week and a half, and then we came back this past Wednesday. Yeah, so we yeah you know, we came back, and what today today is Thursday. So this is our second week of class today, and we're taking uh, computer architecture, and we're also doing uh, C sharp, which I didn't know exactly what to expect from computer architecture. I thought that was just like this is a piece of hardware. This is what it does. No, it's this is like a screen. This it, is how it beat bop boops. <laughs> <laughs> no, the speakers would probably beat. Oh, bop you're boop, right. You're yeah. right. And uh, but yeah, so those kind of things, I had no idea that by architecture they were like, 
okay, so you need circuits, and these circuits need to be, you know, Wired. and, and or, um, what's another word I just learned? Nand. 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 So, which means not and. So Which is nor. That. So is not and also a, con- a conjunction? So, and. All right, so how about this? If I was going to a party and for some reason you weren't going to go, I'd say, oh, Dig Nand Joe are here. Or, or Joe <laughs> Nand Dig are here. <laughs> <laughs> I so, guess, yeah, I guess it, that's not nor. Because that would be dig, Digna nor Joe. Well, or you would say, like, if I told Desmond, like, go to the bathroom and brush your teeth, I would say, go to the bathroom nand eat chocolate sauce <laughs> like i don't want you, i don't want you to eat chocolate i'm not gonna sauce. lie that made that term a little bit more clear right now <laughs> in terms of school because i was thinking not and not and equals nor but it doesn't no that it's not or. no i hear it now but but nor is actually a word i've never really used it i use it i use it pretty often actually i think i just throw or Neither you nor I would be the only time I would say it as a nor. Like a normal human being. And how often do I say neither you nor I? Well, not to me. I say you and I ain't. That's that's how you're supposed to say it. You're learning real good. Yeah. So, but there is like a lot of math. Yeah. We're taking two computer classes right now. One of them is C sharp programming and, um, I wouldn't say that it's got math so much as just unexplained characters. And then this computer architecture class has straight up math, which they call algebra, but it's not algebra. It's their own version of algebra and it has nothing to do with actual algebra, except that there are letters. And so, well, you know, uh, like the one that really got me. So, you know, the division sign. So not the little line with the dot on top, dot on bottom. The old school one where you had to put your number on the inside of the little box. The quotient and the dividend. No, the quotient is the answer. Yeah, that's not. The the, dividend and the divisor. But yeah, so you have the box that's kind of like L-shaped. It's like an L on its side. Well, today, I am not even kidding. In one of the problems, they had that same little thing, but it was upside down. So it actually was the L. Yes. Well, no. Well, an L is like this Mm -hmm. or, you know, just like a regular L. So instead of being like this, Mm -hmm. it was like that. So yeah, I guess it was kind of L-shaped, but it was like, instead of where an L is shorter on the bottom and it's longer on the top, it was really weird. I'm like, okay, so this divided by this. I'm like, wait, did you guys just break the division thing? They broke the division thing and then they didn't divide it properly. Oh yeah. And and, uh, what is it? Plus doesn't mean plus. Plus means... Yeah, the plus sign means or. Yeah. So if I say one or two, I'm apparently not, I'm not saying one plus two equals three. I'm saying one or two equals something. We don't know what that something is yet. Yeah. We haven't gotten that far. One or two but equals yeah, if you ever want jumping to... jacks. You just, just <laughs> random garbage. If you ever want to have to plan out how chips work in circuits, this is the class for you. It's not for me. I don't know if chips and circuits was even right i said words you could say chips and circuits N- nand circuits <laughs> chips nand donuts <laughs> <laughs> i thought about getting donuts this evening actually and then i realized i think donut places close relatively early yeah like I, seven because that is the cake that you're allowed to eat for breakfast i know they open so damn early and you can have cake for breakfast but i can't go out and get a donut at 9 p.m what is that like who wants to eat cake so early that the sun hasn't even gotten out of bed? I mean, I do, but I also want the freedom to be able to eat them late at night. You can take our donuts, but you'll never take our freedom. <gasps> no, wait, they definitely took our freedom and our donuts. Yeah, they took our donuts, our freedom, and uh, yeah, now I have to... Uh, oh, you, you want to know? I know it's pretty petty of me. I'm just thinking about this. The biggest... Since the coronavirus. The, the, corona, the novel coronavirus. You know, every time I hear the term novel coronavirus, I think someone's talking about a book. But continue. What's the biggest gripe you have? I've never heard novel coronavirus. But 
Uh, so the biggest thing that gets me, and it's it makes it's so one of those first world problems thing, is when you're wearing your mask if you're out in public. Like I ha- I was at a a doctor's office where you like you have to wear it. They're not going to see you without wearing it. So I uh, I was there, could not use Face ID on my phone, mm-hmm. and and I was just thinking like, man, I just paid the money to upgrade because I had the iPhone SE for the longest time. And I paid the money to upgrade to a newer phone that has the face ID and the other one had touch ID. And I was like, well, I'm not wearing gloves. So I would actually be better off with my old phone right now (laughs) than I am with this new one. So teeny tiny phone. I realize it's a first world problem, but that's really the one that was kind of getting me today because I I was at the doctor and I was taking notes. And the screen. Oh yeah, that was happening to me too. Yeah, and the screen would, you know, while I wasn't actively taking a note, I'd have to go and have to, you know, put in the code and all that stuff. But yeah, so once again, I realize it's not that big of an issue. There are much bigger. It is annoying though. But that was the biggest annoyance, little annoyance, you know, that I've that I've run into just because I was taking so many notes on that phone today for that appointment. So, without further ado. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, these are really gross cards. <laughs> They're very wet. Poddex. Poddex.com. All right, today's card brought to you by Bud Light. Superior drinkability. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you don't remember that. Pick a card. Like Pick a card. ESPN. Only that card. Which living person do you most despise? living person Mm -hmm. so you can't like go and name somebody who's dead and so so can we say well what about this one kim jong-un is he dead is he alive you know i was gonna ask that yesterday is he i thought about him for some very random reason and i thought wait we don't know if he's dead yet we stopped talking about him if he's still alive well i'll say fat baby man un (laughs) (laughs) all right i don't know so which living person do i most despise i don't know these questions we could also do um this they could be a a fictitious character so like if there's a a tv show where you're just like oh that person is so bad like a joffrey since we're going back to the game of thrones (laughs) Joffrey would really be one. That was one character I remember reading the book. Yes, I'm that guy. Oh, I read the book. Uh, how did you not read the book I read before it the first. show? Oh, oh, oh. oh no, it was better in the book. No, I didn't say it, but but the uh, Joffrey when he I knew what was happen how it was gonna play out, and I was like, yes, do it. <laughs> and yeah, and he, his face started turning purple. It was beautiful. It was a he beautiful was poisoned. Thing. Spoiler. Well, it's not a spoiler. <laughs> if, Ten years later. If you haven't watched it, bro, if if you can't watch it when you're being forced to stay at home to Netflix and actually chill. Is not, it on Netflix, though? It's I, on HBO. But you could HBO and chill. Come on now. Yeah, pay for that. Dang. I mean, I pay for Netflix, too. Wink. <laughs> 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 Trying to save our money right now, man. All right, so your living person that you despise most is, yeah, I th- not that that's a bad question. It's just one of those questions where you're like, I don't want to be like, oh, I hate that person because. I mean, I don't know that I despise anyone in my real life. Well, exactly. That's why. And I, then that's why I was like, fat people, baby, un. Cause... People that I think that I hate who are not in my real life, I'm like, nah. <laughs> Do I actually despise them? I don't know. I don't actually know them. I mean, you know what? Kim Jong Un might be a nice little baby man, <laughs> for for all you know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe he is actually just a baby. Maybe he's actually still like twelve years old. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I want to say someone like, I mean, I guess a world leader is someone I I naturally gravitate to just because you hear about them the most. Like, I want to say I hate Putin, but I. I don't know. He's he's weird. He's one of those weird characters in the world that you're like, you're crazy. Like, I don't know. He's just weird. I hate 
the despise. fact I despise the fact that there are pe- so many people in the world who are so silently abundantly rich that are just screwing things up for the rest of us and they get to live in their silent abundantly rich lives so so you're hating on them i'm not hating on them i and no because if they're rich and they're doing good things with what they have no i don't hate that they have a shit ton of money i hate that i despise the people who have a shit ton of money, aren't doing anything good with it, are doing bad things with it, and are inadvertently ruining the rest of our lives because of it. All right, then. I don't know their names. There's probably a lot more of them than I think. Tom Smithingtonberg. I believe that. That guy. Sounds like a good, abundantly rich person, bad decision-making person. Name. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I guess we will forever have to wonder who that person really is for Digna. Like I said, yeah, the question itself was just one of those where it's not that it's a bad question. It's just a hard question to be put on the spot like we do here. So maybe if we would have reread and done two hours of homework and all this kind of stuff, we might have come up with better answers. But since we didn't do any of that, I guess we'll leave you with this. been a getting to know brews presentation music provided by purpleplanet.com that's purple-planet.com